Hello everyone and welcome to our brand new video on the actions of hydrophilic and hydrophobic hormones. Uh, so in this video we are going to discuss how these hormones work, uh, how they differ in their chemistry, their actions upon the cell. So really it's going to be a one drawing video, uh, kind of a simple one, uh, but really high impact, really high value uh, for a concept that uh, can be uh, challenging for a lot of students the first time they see it. So let's do our little simple drawing and what we're just basically going to do is a cell and I'm going to separate this cell and I'm going to talk about the hydrophobic hormones over here. Now let's just remind ourselves of these words hydrophobic what does that actually mean that means that these things do not like water they do not interact with water they do not like water these hormones do not interact with water so a great example of these would be a steroid hormone uh, that would be a great example. Classic example would be your steroid. Here's a typical steroid skeleton. Um, and uh, the steroid skeleton, remember, you're dealing with uh, four fused rings, three six-membered rings, one five-membered ring. And uh, these hormones would be found in the blood. Of course, this is a hormone. So we are in the blood. Uh, hormones, remember, circulate through blood. That's where we find them. And what we want to talk about with these hormones is something very specific about hydrophobic hormones, and that's the first thing I want to mention about their chemistry, is they will be bound by a transport protein in the blood. They will have transport proteins. I'm just going to call this a TP, a transport protein, uh, for simple. Uh, transport proteins will carry this hormone through the bloodstream. And what we're going to see about that is this hormone Remember just very briefly, a very brief overview of the biochemistry of the, the chemistry of the cell membrane. Remember that your cell membrane, if you were to look at it here, you would have this bilayer of phospholipids. So what you have is these hydrophilic phosphate heads with the choline and the, um, those molecules, the... Uh, um, phosphate, the choline, all that, and then you'd have these hydrophobic fatty acid tails, these diglycerides that will be there. Now, because this steroid being a steroid is a lipid and being hydrophobic, it will enter into the cell membrane and go right through the cell membrane by simple diffusion. Now, what it does when it gets there is where things get rather interesting, is inside the cell there will be various organelles. For example, the nucleus, for example, might be here. And in that nucleus there might be some DNA, there will be some DNA, not might be, but there will be some DNA. And what we can have is on our DNA or in our nucleus, for example, there can be some receptor proteins found inside the cell membrane, inside the cell here and these receptors will be sensitive to this hormone and they might be located for example on genes and what we can do is this can end up creating for example proteins being produced uh, proteins enzymes things like that the genes will be activated gene activation transcription translation uh, for example uh, muscle protein things like that now another thing that might happen, and I'm going to give another great example of that, is we have an organelle located in the cell based on the drawing that I'm doing here. This is obviously our mitochondria. And this hormone could, for example, go to our mitochondria. And on the mitochondria, there might be a receptor for the steroid hormone, this lipid hormone, this lipid hydrophobic hormone. And uh, this might make this thing produce ATP, for example, uh, to power uh, and produce energy. So what we would see is, is that in hydrophobic hormones, they diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer and they go in and they bind to receptors inside the cell called intracellular receptors that are located on organelles to cause responses on the inside by going directly through the cell membrane and affecting receptors inside. Now, this is very different when you're dealing with a hormone that is said to be hydrophilic. Now, hydrophilic 
philic, where philos is a type of love, these guys do do love water. They love water. They uh, attract to water. They dissolve in water. A great example here I'm drawing, uh, let's say this is a um, uh, an insulin molecule, insulin hormone, peptide hormone. What we're going to see with them is their receptors will be located on the cell membrane, an extracellular receptor, where their receptor is located on the cell membrane. What they're going to do is these cell uh, membrane receptors, they're going to be bound to and interacting with, uh, associated to, linked to a G protein. And what's going to happen is when this hormone binds to this receptor that is G protein coupled or G protein linked, this G protein will get activated here. And when it activates, it activates some kind of second messenger system. Second messengers you will have second messengers be activated. And these second messengers, for example, could lead to enzyme activity, for example, phosphorylation, uh, things like that, uh, uh, kinases, uh, various enzyme activity. And another thing it might do is it might move, cause the movement or influx of ions. And together, this will give the response to that cell and that will cause the response and the insight and this is how hydrophilic hormones work so there is a big difference between a hydrophobic and hydrophilic hormone now remember hydrophilic because they are water soluble they don't need a transport protein they go through the water in the blood here um, the since blood is mostly water um, the water in the blood they go through unbound to a protein and they have to bind because they are hydrophilic they can't enter the cell membrane they must bind to an extracellular receptor so I hope you found this video, this simple video, helpful and insightful uh, as it is a very big concept but can be relatively easy to understand if you understand the chemistry of the cell membrane and the chemistry of the hormones. Um, if you would like more information on the chemistry of the hormones, watch my video on hormone classification. But if you haven't uh, yet, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, uh, leave a like, and always comment. Let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.